Hey guys, it's Tuesday, February 2nd, 2021. Um, I'm back today to uh, continue my series on the PC specs and how it relates to music production. So today we're going to be talking about, uh, what is that? We're going to be talking about RAM today. RAM, RAM, fun stuff. Um, I did part one last week about CPUs, so definitely check that out. There's a link in the description for that. And also, there's a link in the description for the older version to my RAM video from like five years ago, if you want to check that out. It's hilariously bad. It was five years ago. Anyway, but um, uh, yeah, so I'm updating the series. Obviously, this is part two. So let's jump right into it. So for today, we will be looking at... Uh, a couple of questions, a couple of questions. So first thing we'll be looking at is, <clears throat> what is RAM? What is it? What is it? Why is it important? How it works and what to look for. So starting with the first question, what is RAM? Let's just look at what RAM looks like. This is what a RAM module looks like. Uh, they're pretty small, pretty slim, and you don't want to get them scratched up. <laughs> Let's just start there. So, that's what it looks like. All right, so let's go through my list of information. All right, so RAM, R-A-M is an acronym, and it stands for Random Access Memory. Um, RAM is a supporting component with your CPU, so they actually work together. It's hard to say one is better than the other because you need them both to be working optimally, and there needs to be a balance between the RAM that you have and the CPU. And I'll go a little bit deeper into that a little bit later. But basically, um, random access means you can jump around anywhere in the address of the memory to edit the data or to remove data or to add more data. And RAM does this extremely fast. So kind of think about uh, the way it's accessing what's in RAM when it says jumping around to any address real quickly, like you're going through the shelves in a library to find a specific book to get some information, to get a specific book. Um, there is no like sequential order that you have to go through with RAM. You can just randomly jump to any aisle and any row very quickly. You don't have to go through a specific path. So that's one of the things that makes RAM fast. Another thing is that RAM has what they call symmetrical read and write. So what that means is it reads and it writes data at the same speed. And this, act, this adds to the fact of why RAM is so fast. The next thing to know about RAM is RAM is volatile storage. And what that means is if you have no power being sent to your RAM, the RAM doesn't exist, you will have no RAM, it's not usable. And also, whatever you have loaded in RAM, as soon as it is removed, like you close it and remove it from the RAM, it no longer exists and you can never get it back. And I'll get into a quick side note with that. Real quick, RAM and storage, people tend to get those things mixed up. RAM and storage are two different things. Storage is hard drive physical storage. RAM is more uh, virtual storage, which I'm going to get to in a minute. But people tend to get those things um, uh, mixed up because of some of the language. And sometimes they get ROM mixed up with RAM. 
but they're all different types of storage. But your RAM is volatile storage and it represents a virtual space that does not exist. So quick side note about the whole volatile RAM thing and you saving files. So a part of what makes RAM so fast is that, um, well, a part of what makes RAM different, I should say, from your hard drive is when you open your program, it's loaded into RAM. So all the things that needs to be open for your DAW, because that's the main thing we're talking about, DAW, music editing software, um, plugins, that type of thing. Everything gets loaded in your RAM because it cannot run off your hard drive. Your hard drive is too slow. Your program will not be able to run smoothly if it just ran off your hard drive. So whenever you open a program and you see it loading and it finally opens up, it just loaded all the components for it to operate in your RAM. Yes, I'm still streaming. So it loads everything in RAM and then you can function. So when you hit a note on your... Um, whether it be on your physical computer keyboard or you hit a note on your MIDI controller or your, you know, your trigger pads or whatever it is, you get that instant response because it's loaded in RAM. If you were trying to do that, try to do that with the program running off your hard drive, it would not run that smoothly and that quickly. So everything that's running on your computer has to be running in RAM. So whenever you make changes, let's say you created a new file, you start working on a beat and uh, you added some drums, laid down some kicks, snare, hi-hats, some chords, and you're grooving. Once you hit save and it says, give it a name, you give it a name, you tell it where to store this, what hard drive to store this on. Once you hit save, that state of that project is now saved to your hard drive so it's now on the hard drive and it's also in ram as soon as you go back to the project and you start making more changes the what's in ram is now different from what's stored to your hard drive so if you lose that if you lost power on the pc at that point and you didn't save those new changes. Let's say you did a baseline now and you hadn't hit save and your laptop or your computer, whatever, just cuts off. Everything that's in RAM will be lost. The only thing that's saved is what you saved to your hard drive because your hard drive can operate, can not operate, sorry. Your hard drive can hold the data when there's no power going to it. The RAM, however, because the computer cut off, it's all gone. Nothing can be recovered from what was in RAM. This is why it's important to save because every time you save, you're saving the current state of that project from your RAM to your hard drive, which your hard drive is able to hold on to the data even when your computer is off and no power is going to the drive. RAM can't do that. Also, if you're running your program and you added that baseline but you never saved and the program crashes, nine out of 10 times, you've lost that baseline because you didn't save. So the last state of saved um, project that you had on your hard drive, that's all you're gonna have. This is why it's important for you to constantly save. It always drives me crazy when I'm at studios and somebody will be working on something all day and they just leave the computer on, they go to lunch to come back and they'll ask me to do something and when I go to edit or change something, I'm constantly hitting control S because on PC that's probably nine out of 10 times the universal uh, key command to save. So I'm always constantly hitting control S with every little tweak that I make. And I'll hit control S and I see the save dialog pop up, which means we haven't saved this at all. There's no version of this that's saved to a hard drive. And that makes me nervous because if something happened, power outage, whatever, 
um, a plugin. You could load a plugin that can just cause the the project to crash. You would lose lose all the data and all the progress that you've made on that project. So that that side note is just to caution you to save and save often and for you to understand why it's important to save dealing with ram versus hard drive ram is volatile storage which means it is non-existent when there is no power going to it and whatever you say whatever you close out of ram whether it be forced close or it crashed or you closed it once it's gone out of ram you cannot recover it so save and save often hopefully that made sense as far as just what ram is as far as why is it important to save often so um after all that rambling we kind of understand that your file your programs your projects your open active programs are running in ram so ram is short-term storage your hard drive is long-term storage so um ram operates at different speeds i'm not going to get too much into speeds because speeds can be kind of complicated and it, it just opens up another box that I don't want to deal with. It's not um, that important. What you need to remember about RAM speed is you need to get the correct RAM speed for your system. So you need to find out what RAM speed that your RAM operates at and your, your computer needs basically. What, the, what RAM speed do you need for your computer? And that's the RAM you need to get for your computer. If you need to replace RAM, if you need to upgrade RAM, you need to know what's your RAM speed. The speed is usually in um, gigahertz, megahertz, gigahertz. I think it's in gigahertz, but it's usually like 1800 or 2100. I think it's megahertz. So you got to make sure that if your RAM is like a 2400, it needs to, you need to get that to replace it or to upgrade so you find out what your ram speed is it's in hertz okay now let's give you an analogy to kind of depict ram size and why ram size is important and this is like one of the the most important parts of this video <coughs> excuse me uh so the analogy of RAM size and why it's important is uh, I, I did the same analogy for my last video five years ago, so I'm going to use the same one. So think of your RAM size as like if you had a classroom, right? You're a teacher, you have a classroom. The classroom represents your RAM size. So if you have a, a classroom that's very small, let's say the size of a bedroom, right? You have to have uh, things in the room to work as a teacher to function. You need your desk, you need a, a chalkboard or whatever technology they're using now, smart boards and all that stuff. You have your computer. Then you have students. Let's say you have 15 students. Try to fit 15 students in your bedroom 15 students they all need desks and all the things that they need to operate so you need space to lay out their desk they need to come in sit in their desk and then function your classroom needs to function 15 kids 15 desks plus your desk 16 desks you cannot function like that you, you just can't because the rams the rams the room size represents the ram size that you have in your computer the class meaning you and the children in the class and the desks and all that stuff represents your software that's your that you're running everything the software needs to run it opens up and loads in ram so your your room is the ram space that you have and the classroom including you and the students and all the desks can't function because there's not enough space to fit 15 kids and you and their desks in that space that's what happens when you try to load 
a very complex program with not enough RAM. Now, if you had a re an average class room size to do that, now functioning in that class is a lot more feasible because you have enough space to fit 15 desks. The kids can come in, they can put their bags down somewhere, they can set themselves up on the de at the desks and start working. You can teach, they can learn effectively, they can do the things you're asking them to do. They can function in the space. Just like how the software can now open up itself in RAM and have enough space to function and do all the operations that it needs to do. Now, if you had that same class of 15 kids in one corner of a gymnasium, a basketball gymnasium, now you have a whole lot more space to function and have that class be effective as far as you teaching and the kids learning and you have space to lay out the desks and everything. Now, because you have this big gym gymnasium, you can now have more classes. You can put a class in every corner of the gymnasium and each class would represent another program and they're not really interfering with each other. Because if you try to run two different classes in an average size classroom and let's say each uh, class had 10 kids and you have them meeting in the middle facing opposite ways and trying to it's still gonna be problematic because the chatter from one class is gonna bleed over into the next so once again you have a little bit of space but you're cramming too many programs trying to do too many things and it starts to become problematic you start experiencing issues in the computer world that's where you would uh, start to experience slowdown and issues when you're like, oh, I have too many things open. I have too many programs open is because you're running out of space, virtual space for the program to operate. So you want to make sure that you have a lot of RAM based on what your program needs. So this is why it's important to pay attention to the specs, the recommended specs. Um, they have minimum and recommended specs usually. Usually just look at the recommended specs for the software because it'll tell you this software requires this amount of RAM. Um, it'll tell you, you know, what processor type, you know, you should have something comparable to this or better. And it talks about hard drive space. We'll talk about hard drive space in the next video. But hopefully that analogy made sense. So you want to have a lot of RAM because you're running a, a very complicated uh, software in your DAW, but not only that, you're running plugins that also require RAM. So now you need just a lot of space to make sure that you have headroom when it comes to running your uh, DAW, running all the many different plugins that you will be running and maybe some other software. Plus, bear in mind that your operating system by itself is also using up RAM. So you wanna make sure that you have enough RAM for everything to be running all at the same time and you still have more RAM to go and you're not running into issues. So you wanna give yourself a lot of RAM so you have a lot of leeway because certain things are gonna fluctuate as far as how much RAM is needed at any given time or any given project depending on what you load up. Now let's talk 32-bit uh, um, versus 64-bit. So 32-bit, talking about your software now, your operating system and also any software you have for music production, whether it be a plugin or whether it be your DAW. Now 32-bit, the downsides to the downside to 32-bit plugins is that um, it can only access four gigs of RAM because of when it was uh, created and the architecture that it runs on. At the time, four gigs was a big deal, but we've way surpassed four gigs of RAM on a computer. This computer over here has 128 gigs of RAM installed in it. My music computer behind me um, has 32 gigs of RAM, but it maxes out at 512 gigs of RAM. 
so I'm nowhere near maxed out on that one um, and that's why I got it uh, that's what like eight years ago and it's still rocking <laughs> all I've done is just upgraded the video card that's it but as far as RAM it came with 32 gigs and it still has the same 32 gigs in it but when I need to upgrade I can but I don't need to with what I do so if you have a DAW that's 32 bit it can only really access 4 gigs of RAM so you want to definitely install the 64 bit version of especially the DAW if you um if you have access to it Mo most modern day no DAWs are um 64 bit compatible they have a 64 bit version you have to make sure that your operating system is 64 bit once again most computers they're running the 64 bit version of the operating system so whether you're on mac os or um windows or even linux and all the flavors that comes in so the only thing that i'll see most times that 32 bit still exists and it's you know it's still functional is um plugins some plugins older plugins they'll only have a 32 bit version but they still function well and they still get the job done now um let's talk about what uses up ram and kind of get um kind of get a, a idea of what ram usage looks like on like an average project so um from my research of course your os is using up ram right and then other applications that you might have running in the background so if you have things like your your browser running um things like what is that thing called uh that i hate so much antivirus antivirus software if you got ad blockers and pop-up blockers and all these weird programs that are running in the background even when they don't need to be these things are all using up ram although they might not be using a lot of ram but it is using ram so just be aware of that so um when it comes to music production software of course your uh, your daw is, will be using up ram and your plugins will be using up ram now from my research your daw doesn't use up that much ram most times um some daws are much better than other with ram management and i could do a whole deep dive into that but i'm not doing that in this video but i've done some research and found some amazing things with certain daws and just from my personal experience also how efficient certain doors are because of the more modern um coding that they're built on and they just do better at ram management now um another thing that i found out is if you have a lot of vst plugins vst instruments loaded in a project and you think freezing them might free up more ram it really doesn't i think not just freezing them it's more about removing them totally from the project because even if you freeze them they're still technically in the project they're just not running the sound the sound is actually audio so they're still using up ram plus the audio files are using up a bit of ram because all the audio has to load into ram the audio in your project now, one of the big offenders <laughs> that's gonna be sucking up a lot of your RAM in your projects is if you have romplers. If you have a bunch of romplers loaded up and um, you're losing using those sample libraries. So one of the most common ones would be like Contact or um, the other one that I talked about yesterday. Uh, what is that? Labs. There's another one called i think sign player there's a bunch of them but anything that runs sample based libraries where they're literally sampling every note so every note you play is some kind of audio file maybe a wave or a org file or something like that 
that's taking up space, a lot of space and RAM because all of those notes have to be loaded into RAM when you pick that piano, that eight gig piano from um, from Contact, one of the Contact libraries. It's loading all of that stuff into RAM so that you'll be able to trigger it and play it in real time. And then some of those, like an eight gig piano, the reason why it's so big is that every note might have two, three, maybe four samples for one note for different velocities and just different um, dynamics that they recorded to give it more of a realistic feel and vibe. So one note alone could be three, four notes. And when you think about, you know, 88 notes times three or four, and that has all to be loaded in RAM, then you have like multiple instances of contact. Or if you're using contact more officially, more efficiently, and you have one contact device playing multiple uh, patches, sounds, sample libraries, you're still loading multiple sample libraries once you activate them to play sounds. So if it's a piano, then some really lush sounding strings and all these fancy libraries, um, it's still eating up a lot. It'll eat up significantly more than if you had a synth. The synth uses a little bit of RAM, but not as much because it still needs RAM for all the different parts to generate sounds, the different oscillators and um, the modulation you have going, but it's significantly less than what a lot of these modern day rompelers will be using. So that's one of the things in your project that will eat up a lot of RAM. So just be mindful of that. So on a budget to wrap this up on a budget on a budget um the best thing for you to do we talked about cpu now we're talking about ram the best thing for you to do is get the best cpu you can get for your budget and then when it comes to ram if you're on a tight budget and you can't like get a, a, a let's say you're trying to get a laptop um you can go for you know the top of the line latest cpu with a fast speed and then get a laptop that doesn't come with a lot of ram right off the bat like eight gigs is usually a good place to start i would say start no less than eight gigs of ram but you get a laptop that has the ability to upgrade so you find out what's the max amount of ram this laptop or this desktop can hold that's actually more important because if you get like this laptop I have right now, it has 32 gigs of RAM in it. That's what I got it with. Um, my main concern was more about the um, upgradability of the RAM. What's the ceiling? What's the max amount of RAM? And also my CPU speed and what generation CPU is in there. Um, so I could have even gotten this with less RAM because this mat this laptop maxes out at 64 gigs now by the time i'm ready to double that to 64 from 32 to 64 might be a year and a half maybe two years from now and ram for this will be significantly cheaper so if you're on a budget you can think about you know getting eight gigs of ram to start on your system that should get you up and running unless you know you do a lot of high-end stuff with a lot of um, sample libraries, which would be some people who do a lot of orchestration, then most likely you already have the budget to buy something with more RAM to begin with. Then you go out and get that. For, but for those people who are starting and your budget might be tight, concentrate on getting something with about eight gigs of RAM to start and you should be fine. Concentrate more on getting a fast CPU, something, you know, latest generation, multiple cores um the most cores you can afford because you can always upgrade the ram later add more so just pay attention to what the max ram is so that you have headroom to upgrade later and add more ram and get a little bit more life out of your purchase so that's pretty much it for the video guys uh 
part three i don't know when it's coming it might come at the end of this week if not it'll definitely be here for next week and um for part three what am i talking about yeah this is the whole layout for this series so i already did um cpu um i just did ram <laughs> and I'm going to do storage next. So I'm going to be talking about hard drives. That gets pretty interesting. That actually has changed a lot from my last video. So I'm really looking forward to talk about that. Because I, I learned a lot dealing with what's going on with storage. They've actually made some pretty huge leaps in storage. After that, we're going to talk about GPU. GPU is also a weird and interesting one. When you're talking about music production, it is important, but it's not important. So we'll kind of break down in what aspect it is important. And the last topic will be your audio interface, which is pretty important for you to understand that and what you need based on what you are doing. So that's it for the video, guys. Thanks for watching. Tomorrow is Wednesday, so I will be back to um, do free app free app wednesdays um every monday wednesday and friday i present free apps so um if you're interested check that out check out some of the videos um wherever you check them out youtube facebook twitch even on twitter <laughs> my twitter all the information is there um in the description so uh tomorrow this week i've been dealing with um reverbs and pianos so i'm gonna be doing reverb and pianos tomorrow i don't know how many but i'll have some reverbs and pianos for free app wednesdays um i'll be definitely showing some other stuff and on friday i'll be wrapping up the week of free apps with um reverbs and pianos and we'll be going through some news whatever music production news happened this week that I feel is important <laughs> and um, we'll also just skim through some new stuff that came out this week there's some new stuff that came out this week already and I'll be talking about them on Friday new plugins so there'll be extra plugins on Friday to talk about so that's it guys thanks for watching and as always you'll see me in the next video <laughs>